relative numbers of atoms in an atomic beam experiment. Precision measurements of the magnetic moment of the electron were instrumental in leading to our modern understanding of the quantum theory of the electromagnetic field. So we're trying to do precision measurements of magnetic moment of the electron. The first such precision experiment performed by Cush and Foley uh, was based on a comparison of the measured total magnetic moments of the gallium atoms in two different sets of states labeled in standard spectroscopic notation as 2p1 half and 2p3 half. So we're looking at a comparison of the measured total magnetic moments of gallium atoms in two different uh, states. The 2p1 half states are the states of lowest possible energy of the atom. There are two such states with the same energy. They correspond merely to the two possible spatial orientations of the total angular momentum of the atom in the set of states. The 2p3 half states have a higher energy uh, than that of the 2p1 half states by an amount accurately known from spectroscopic measurements and equal to 0 0.102 electron volts. There are four such states having the same energy. They correspond again merely to the four possible spatial orientations of the total angular momentum of the atom in this set of states. To perform the desired comparison, the number of atoms in the 2p3 half states must be comparable to the number of atoms in the 2p1 half states. The atoms can be produced by heating gallium in an oven to a high absolute temperature T. So we're exciting uh, the gallium atoms. A small hole in the oven wall then permits a few of the atoms to escape into a surrounding vacuum where they form an atomic beam on which the actual measurements are made. Suppose that the absolute temperature of the oven is 3 TR. TR is room temperature. What is the proportion of gallium atoms uh, which are in the 2p1 half and 2p3 half states respectively? The highest temperature which can be produced conveniently in such an oven is about 6 TR. What is then the proportion of gallium atoms in the 2p1 half and 2p3 half states respectively? Is this proportion adequate for such a successful experiment? So I note that uh, first of all we have uh, two uh, levels. Uh, one level, energy level, has four states. That's the excited state. So one, two, three, four states. And one energy level has two states. So we have degeneracy in this problem. And then we have the energy difference between these two states. Delta E is equal to 0 0.102 electron volts. And the aim is to get uh, the number of uh, atoms uh, in the uh, 2p3 half uh, states uh, almost the same as the number of atoms in the 2p one half uh, states. So that's what we're trying to obtain. So to do that, we uh, we use uh, heating. So that these uh, gallium atoms can be excited uh, from the lowest possible energy state to the excited uh, state, which has the the four possible uh, equal energy states. Okay, so. Uh, Let's talk about this situation uh, in terms of the uh, canonical distribution point of view. So we have uh, once again um, two states with the lowest possible energy. These are corresponding to 2p1 half uh, and they have the lowest possible energy E. So let's call this E1 half. And then we have the excited state, uh, which has four possible spatial orientations of the angular momentum. So this is the 2p3 uh, half. 
and the corresponding energy level I call E3 half and the difference between these two energy levels is delta E is equal to 0 0.102 electron volts. Okay, so uh, the number of atoms in any state uh, will be proportional to the number of accessible states uh, at that level. Uh, so the number of atoms in the state uh, with energy three, E3 three over 2 and 3 over 2 will be equal to the number of accessible states where I have uh, energy E3 over 2 divided by the total number of accessible states. This is due to my equal a priori uh, probabilities postulate. So I know that this is going to be uh, using the canonical distribution uh, a constant uh, C times uh, so C is 1 over omega uh, total uh, the the degeneracy, uh, the, the number of uh, levels which have the same energy, so I have uh, four of them, uh, e to the minus beta e 3 over 2. So uh, this is the degree of degeneracy. degenerate uh, levels have the same energy and uh, similarly I have for uh, the number of atoms in the level with energy E1 half is equal to the number of accessible states uh, corresponding to this scenario divided by total number of accessible states so it's going to be a constant C 1 over omega total multiplied by degeneracy level which is 2 e to the minus beta e one half okay so the ratio uh, of these two so if you want to determine uh, the ratio of the atoms in these two states and 3 over 2 divided by and 1 over 2 uh, or the electrons let's say in, in these two states this is going to be uh, 4 over 2 e to the minus beta, the difference between the energies e3 over 2 minus e1 over 2. So this is going to be equal to 2 uh, e to the minus uh, beta delta e. So delta E is the difference between the energy levels E3 over 2 minus E1 over 2. Okay, so which is precisely equal to, it's known from spectroscopic measurements to be equal to 0 0.102 electron volts. So therefore I find that this is 2 E to the minus beta 0 0.102. So let's answer part A. Now the oven temperature uh, T is equal to 3 TR. Then what is the value of uh, KT? So KT will be equal to 3 KTR, which is uh, 3 times 1 over 40 electron volts. So this is 3 over 40 electron volts. So uh, that means for the number of uh, the ratio of the number of uh, atoms in these two states and 3 over 2 divided by and 1 over 2 I will have 2 e to the minus uh, 3 over uh, so, so since beta is equal to uh, 1 over kt here I have e to the minus uh, 40 over 3 uh, times uh, 0 0.102 so this is going to give me um, 
a number which is roughly uh, 0 0.5 so at this temperature uh, only uh, I have half of the uh, uh, I mean the portion the proportion of the atoms in the three half state to one half state will be uh, 0 0.5 so for part B, uh, I'm going to have this time temperature is equal to 6TR. So KT value will be equal to 6KTR, which is 6 over 40 electron volts. And once again, beta is uh, 1 over KT. Uh, remember, so the ratio of the atoms and 3 over 2 divided by n1 over 2 will be equal to 2 e to the minus 40 divided by 6 0 0.102 uh, and if you calculate this this is uh, roughly equal to 1 okay so uh, there is an important uh, remark here uh, so we should note that the uh, e to the minus beta uh, e is for uh, non-degenerate state occupancy probability. So we have, uh, therefore, we have to add the contribution from, uh, we have to add the contribution from degeneracy in probability calculations. So this is an important uh, conclusion that we have, uh, which we have mentioned also in the in the lecture. Now, uh, finally, there's one more question. Uh, basically, is this proportion adequate for a successful experiment? The aim was to obtain a ratio of uh, one. So t is equal to uh, the conclusion is that t is equal to six t r is uh, going to be uh, is an adequate temperature to obtain uh, the, the ratio n3 half divided by n1 half is equal to 1 so that we can form our atomic beam and take a look at the, uh, the ratio of the uh, magnetic moments of the electrons in these two states okay so uh, once again we're talking about precision measurements of the magnetic moment of the electron which uh, we are performing using an experiment on gallium atoms uh, unmeasured magnetic moment of the gallium atoms the gallium atoms uh, are in two possible states 2p1 half and 2p3 half states and uh, here the the difference between these two energy levels corresponding to these two states is 0 0.102 electron volts but these states are degenerate there are two states corresponding to the 2p1 half energy and four states corresponding to the 2p3 half energy level and um, to perform this uh, measurement precisely we need to have a roughly uh, the same number of atoms in these two states so we have to excite the uh, the electrons from the lower energy level to the higher energy level and this can be done by using thermal energy so uh, by in, in doing the uh, by, by heating the atoms inside an oven uh, we can excite the uh, some of the electrons to the higher energy level 
And first we tried this with a, a oven that has temperature 3 TR and then 6 TR. And uh, we want to know what is the proportion of the atoms uh, we get and which one is adequate for our measurements. So when we form an atomic beam of uh, the, uh, the atoms coming out of the oven through a small hole, we can do the measurements on them. And uh, the proportion of the number of uh, atoms in these two states is uh, a constant C times the degree of degeneracy times e to the minus beta energy of that level. So I called the energy levels as E3 half and E1 half. Uh, and because the degeneracy is 4 for the higher energy level and 2 for the lower energy level, the ratio gives me 2 E to the minus beta delta E. Delta E is uh, 0 0.102 electron volts as found from spectroscopic measurements. So for temperature of 3 TR, when I take this ratio, uh, I just have to calculate the thermal energy KT. In the case the temperature is 3 TR, it's 3 over 40 electron volts. And for 6 TR, it was 6 over 40 electron volts. So if I substitute these numbers, I get 0 0.5 for 3 TR and 1 for 6 TR, which means the 6 TR temperature is adequate uh, to perform these measurements because we will roughly have the same number of uh, atoms in the excited states and in the lowest possible energy level.